I recently stumbled across some of the coolest AI apps or AI tools to help you build apps and websites. And I'm going to give a spoiler alert, spoi, spoiler, I haven't had enough coffee yet, alert that the reality is these apps are not here, these tools are not here to replace you. They are though a great way if you are someone who's either technical or even non-technical, but wants to start building. You have an idea, a business idea, or maybe just something you wanna start exploring for a project. You can now do that at a quicker pace. It's not as though you have to take so many steps back and learn everything from scratch. I mean, if you wanna be a software developer, definitely learn everything from scratch. But if you are someone who is really interested in building apps and building websites, or at least concepts for your business, these tools are for you. Well, they're kind of for everyone because they're super helpful. And this video really came on as I was going through, you know, actually it was LinkedIn I was going through and I saw this post and it was called, I have it here, Rose AI, and I'll, I'll share it with you later in this video, but it essentially is marketing itself as a AI data analyst. And now obviously that's just marketing hype, but it is such a cool tool. So I'm gonna show you that one. I'm going to share with you a bunch about how you can take generate UI UX, turn it into code, then modify the code. We're gonna go through it all. All right, let's get into it. Oh, also, if you're like Tiff, you're not in your usual desk setup, where are you? I'm in Montreal this weekend, so I'm in my hotel room. Uh, it's kind of messy, you know, we're very close to you and I, so I, I'm just bearing it all. I, I kind of tidied up, but we're keeping it real here. I'll insert a photo of the view, the view's okay. I mean, it's no New York, but I'll, I'll insert a photo of the view. All right, the first one I want to share with you about is to create UI and UX design. So mock-ups that you can then use in Figma and then turn it into code. Now, none of these are sponsored, just as an FYI. I'm just a huge fan of, well, pretty much all of them that we're going to speak about today. And the first one that I've spoken about before to you, but I just, I was like, okay, Tiff, should I include it? Should I not include it? I'm like, I, I have to include it, is Wizard. Wizard? UIzard? Definitely Wizard. And they are, well, you tell me how to pronounce it. Here it is. Now, they promote themselves as the world's first AI UI generator, and honestly, it's pretty incredible what they do. So you can insert a prompt, and then they will either generate a wireframe for you, UX for you, UI for you, whatever you want. And the UI for Wizard itself, and the way you can build with it, is so intuitive and user-friendly. Now, I thought it was still good to include them because they did just launch a new feature. This feature, let me pull it up on screen here, it's called Auto Designer 1.5. So this will allow you to generate multiple designs screen so no longer are you stuck to designing you know just the one home page or anything like that you can really design your entire project which is pretty cool and you can do so just by prompting now I've been playing around with it and the prompting you can be pretty flexible with it I thought okay you have to be a really good at prompting or prompt it in a specific way, but it's really intuitive. So this is the tool, if I was to use it, I would use it in the scenario where you have a business idea or you are a developer, either or, so a technical or non-technical person, and you want to show, you know, whether it be investors, whether it be uh, yourself if you're building a project, the basic of it, the wireframes, what it will look like, so other people can really start to envisioning this or visioning it, envisioning it, visioning. Also, you know where this tool would be really useful is for anyone who is doing freelance work. So if you are a freelancer, especially in the developer space or even a designer space, what you can do is as a developer start by, because I think a lot of times as developers, one of the, for me anyways, one of the hardest things to do is actually come up with good UI. I, it just, it's the worst. So having this tool to really start with the foundation and then you can add on to it. It's pretty cool. All right, next on the list is Locofy AI. I think I'm pronouncing this one right, Locofy AI. And this one's really cool because it's more so a plugin that you can plug into different design systems. So for example, it works really well with Figma. You can go in Figma and create your beautiful UI. Or if you want to do these tools step by step, you can use Wizard to create the UI, then export it into Figma. Then in Figma, take this tool, Locofy, plug it in and it will generate, it will take your UI design, your UI UX design and generate it into code that you can export. So it takes design to code, which is pretty cool. Now here is some of the code settings that you can choose from. First is mobile app framework. So they really specialize in React Native. So right now you can export to React Native, but other languages and other frameworks are coming very soon. So this is a platform, a business in itself that's growing really quickly. And I've seen a lot of designers or developers use this tool. All right, the next one is the one that inspired me to start this video, which is Rose AI. And as I mentioned, I just stumbled across this on LinkedIn and I was like, this is so 
cool how useful it is for someone like me who's not a data analyst but loves data and I mean is studying machine learning. It's just brilliant. So what it does is it will allow you to analyze data faster. So you can literally have say, well, let me show you a video of it. I'll show you their video of it. So you can start with the title, start with a little bit of information, and then from there, what would usually be SQL queries that you are generating, you can then use in, in more automated ways. You can select what you want to do. It will analyze the data and give you some beautiful reports of where the data is at. It's so cool. And I think this is a great way, a great tool to use if you are so many different roles within the tech industry. Even thinking now how it makes for marketers, having this data readily accessible is huge. But then on the technical side of things, using this as more of a tool when you are building out other websites or apps to really understand, to make data-driven decisions. It's, I don't know, I think it's amazing. I'll play more of the video on screen here uh, because it's really cool. Okay, the next one I wanna share with you is for any WordPress developers or users out there. And this is called Code WP. Code WP. And honestly, Code WP is something that I recently discovered. I heard about it through a few other developers and they use it and I was like, what is this tool? So you can see on screen here, they label it or market it as a better AI for WordPressers. And this is really cool because this tool, this plugin, um, one of the things I think is really good about it is it has support for all the main languages used within WordPress. So PHP, JavaScript, CSS, of course, and SQL. So it really, SQL. SQL, SQL, that is the debate. Well, it is SQL, right? Yeah, but I like to call it SQL. But I wanna hear, what do you call it? SQL, SQL, are you right, are you wrong? Let me know. Anyways, regardless of what you call it though, Code WP is super, super interesting. You can literally, as you can see in this video here, prompt it with what you would like it to do and it will generate code for you within WordPress. So this you can think of more so as like your assistant when you're building within WordPress. I mean, so many companies still use WordPress. It's, it's one of the most popular uh, platforms to use. So having this tool to use is so helpful. Also, I know a lot of freelance developers work within WordPress. So this is another way to kind of have this code assistant. Noah's not taking over your job, but you can utilize it to build faster and hopefully better. Okay, the next one, the last one is called Framer. And I wanted to say this one for last because if you haven't heard of Framer, you maybe have been living under a rock. I'm just kidding. I only recently heard about it, but I was blown away by when I looked into it. So this one I saved for last because it really is taking an idea and then deploying it. And then everything in between you can do within Framer. Now this isn't just for uh, individual projects, they also work with enterprises. So it's pretty cool. You can build very scalable long-term projects with Framer. And the really cool thing is here too, is you can start here, they have their feature section. So layout, they have their own CMS, localization, AI, different tooling for AI throughout it, uh, SEO. So you literally can come in with an idea that you're like, this is gonna blow up. I know it's gonna be the next Mark Zuckerberg social media, whatever the case is, and start scaling it out through there. Now it's not as simple as just that, of course, but it is a great way for anyone who maybe is technical, but doesn't wanna spend a lot of time on, you know, building the foundations that they already know, but having that skeleton to build upon, or someone who is not tech as technical, but wants to get something in the market, wants to build something. Framer seems like a really great option. Now, I'm not sure, I know there is pricing involved with Framer, let's see what it is. So there are, you can have a free site, which includes some hobby sites, um, a domain and whatnot. And then it does, it's not that expensive. You can have a mini site for $5. And then of course it does go up from there, but I definitely think it is worth looking into if you are someone who has a business idea or uh, is building for a client and wants to see it scale. AI is moving quickly. These tools are moving quickly. How are you all feeling about it? Are you excited? I mean, the reason I made this video is because I thought these tools are out there, people are using them. So we have two choices. We can either adapt and grow and learn with these tools, or we can just resist them. But in turn, we will feel left behind a little bit. It's not saying you need to use these tools in your every day or for every single project, but being open to what is out there, understanding what is out there, and even trying some of them and seeing how they help you. All right, on that note, I need to go get more coffee. I need to go find coffee. I feel like I still have a, a coffee, coffee-less voice. Thank you all for watching. Please hit that subscribe button for more tech coding and uh, career, all, all the things under tech related videos. Leave in the comments what other videos you want me to make. That is how I make these videos. And thank you all for being here. I love you all. You mean the world to me and I'll see you soon.